third speaker we're going to talk about today, because you and I are both a little bit pressed for time today, unfortunately, yeah. the Wharfdale Diamond 12.3. And as unhappy as I am with Wharfdale's representation in the U.S. who do not return phone calls, um, at the end of the day, the Diamond well, series, no, still, after yeah. two years and 30 plus articles. Well, I don't know if it's me, but they're not particularly good at returning my phone calls here either. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I'm connected to like nine people at IAG on LinkedIn. So, so still can't get a return uh, email or phone call. The Diamond Series to me has always been Wharfdale's bread and butter. And, and they can have less expensive speakers and more expensive speakers. Um, I have a pair of actually, you can't see it, it's a little bit off camera. I have a pair of 10.1s on a pair of stands that I've owned for almost six and a half years. And I listen to them daily while I'm sitting here editing and writing. Um, the Diamond Series, I mean, even though they're made overseas, they just keep getting better and better. And, and, and I know over the years they have they have changed out the drivers. They've tried different materials. I think at one point they even used carbon fiber on the drivers maybe. But, you know, the, the drivers have changed. And what was different about the, I guess, the 11 Series is that they went from using a curved enclosure. They went back, they went to like a boxy kind of design. More and squared they, off. Yeah, more squared off, like a typical sort of little two-way bookshelf. And they didn't sell as well. And they also didn't sound as good. What I like about the 12.3 is that it's sort of like the 12.1, but on steroids. It's very easy to drive. You know, it's your typical two-and-a-half-way Wharfdale uh, floor-standing speaker. Um, the cabinet is better made on the 12 than on the 11. Just a really, really decent speaker that does not need a lot of power. Um, it's very good on home theater material. Even though Wharfdale still can't make a center channel speaker to save their lives. Um, the the 12.3 is a very nice, for like a 2.1 type of system, Right, works, works really well. How does it compare to the Q Acoustic 3050i? Okay, sounds smaller. Okay. Uh, both are equally kind of punchy. Wharfdale has a slightly more extended treble they're both very sort of high sensitivity, easy to drive, flat impedance type of speakers. Okay. And um, you, I've heard the Wharf, I mean, actually it's weird. The, the 3050i is better with like a five or six watt tube amplifier. And I find that the 12.3s need a good 30 to 50 watts from a decent solid state or tube, uh, tube integrated to really yeah, open it up. Right. Yeah, but I mean, the Audio Lab is a phenomenal combination with the 12.3. NAD is really nice. Um, Croft is so good with Wharfdale. Like, I mean, I mean Glenn, Glenn Croft, another guy who doesn't return emails or phone calls, but I've owned his products for a long time and he's given me a lot of musical joy over the years. So I'm not, I'm not going to rip too much on, on, on Glenn. But no, but where the Wharfdale 12.3s are a really good value, um, you can find them on sale from almost all the dealers for, I mean, probably usually 20 to 30% off their normal retail price. Right. Um, I don't know if that means that Wharfdale is replacing them in the near future, because I've noticed that if you go on Music Direct here in the US, they're almost always discounted. Yeah, they're, they're better value here. So they're about $1,000. I mean, like, okay, you might get them on sale, like you say, for seven, 800, <coughs> excuse me, for seven, 800. But uh, here in the UK, I just had a quick, quick uh, again, a quick look, and it's similar price to the Q Acoustic Concept. Okay. It's 30, 30, 50 eyes. They're under 500 quid. So um, good value. I, I've never, I'll, I'll just say, I've, I've never heard the um, Diamond series. But what I've heard is the Evo 4.3 a yeah. few times, and that would be on my shortlist. I know it's excluded here because in the US it's like sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars $1,700, but it's yeah. still, it's still act actually just under £1,000 here in the UK. Yeah. Um, see, 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 if that was the case here, th that would be a no-brainer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, but, but Wharfdale makes a nice product and, mm. you know, um, you know, when you, when you consider that they own quad and they own audio lab and they own mission, um, you know, so th there's synergy between a lot of their electronic brands you know, and the speakers, but, but the Wharfdale 12.3s are so, co so compatible with so many other types of amplification yeah. that it's really hard to screw them up. Like actually if, if someone was to ask me, what's the one brand of speakers that you could, you could drive with almost anything and they wouldn't sound bad. Wharfdale would probably be, you know, at the top of that list. So the other thing I wanted to ask you, I know because it's excluded, like I said, because of the price in America, but, um, that Evo 4.3, 
I've heard with Audio Lab a few times, and it sounds really, really good. I mean, you know, dynamic, clean, and but you know, you have to. That, that, that's the reason why I want to pick your brain rather than give my input because you need to get them home. You need to try them with different types of equipment to find out what the character is. Have you had any experience with the Evo range? I've I've only heard the um, Evo bookshelves. Right. Like, like, like the okay. two smaller units. And I like them, you know, and, and I, I obviously they are superior to the Diamond Series and they should be because they're using much better drivers and the cabinet is a totally right. different level of construction. But Audio Lab and Wharfdale is a good combo. So and anybody who's watching us, you know, if your budget sort of tops out where like the 12.3s and the 6,000, the 6,000 a kind of meet, you're not going to hate the combination. It, it's because I think the Wharfdale has the one thing that the Audio Lab doesn't which is kind of a soul. <laughs> I know that's a harsh way yeah. of saying it, yes. but the audio that's lab can, it can be audio lab can be very sterile with the wrong speakers. And the Wharfdale has just enough mid range worth and, and sweetness and airiness in the top that it just makes a good combo. And it's right. like, you, you don't have to spend like thousands of dollars for a much bigger system and feel that, you know, that, that you've been shortchanged by what, what you just bought. I mean, I think that's the good thing about the Wharfdale speakers. They tend to overperform you know, for the money. For the money. Yeah. yeah. That's the um, reputation. Cool. The, um, our on, last year, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. The French, we, we, we can't leave the French out of, out of our discussion <laughs> and, and especially, and, and especially because Focal, Focal is doing some crazy things right now. I mean, if you go on the acoustics website, I think we have five separate Focal stories just from the last week, just because okay. Fo Focal and name are so aggressive right now in on the global market in terms of the Focal powered by name stores that are being opened all over the globe. They just opened two more stores in the US last week. The Focal Bathits, the uh, the headphones that we just reviewed, I mean, quite frankly, they are the best wireless headphones right now that you can buy. But the Cora is, see, I have a feeling that this lineup is gonna get, not killed off, but replaced soon with a new version of it. Um, okay. cause I'm, because Focal is now running in the U.S. at least a 40% off sale on the entire okay. Cora line. And I've reviewed the, the bookshelf Cora 806, love them. I've listened to the 816s, which are my pick. Fo Focal's stuff for me is hit or miss. Like I have to admit, over the years I've listened to, I've listened yeah. to the top Focal. I've listened to like that $1 million dollar name statement focal uh, utopia system and it, yeah. it just didn't float my boat I, mean, and... I, I, I question that partnership really because focal relatively kind of can be a bit bright especially i don't know or maybe those grand utopias are just very very revealing and the, it just sounded a little aggressive to me with the name amplification even the statement amps so okay so even the kanta um very beautiful speakers really well made um but the beryllium tweeters have always sort of not been my favorite. Um, right. I just find them sort of a little overly bright, too much detail, a little too in your face. Um, but the Cora don't use that tweeter. They use a different tweeter um, and they use sort of Focal's very interesting. Actually, the, the drivers they kind of created for the Cora series are kind of a blend of different technologies. And, right. the thing, and, and the thing that I like actually about the Cora series, even more than some of the more expensive ones that are like, I guess, one or two levels above, really good speakers for both music and home theater. I like the kind of light blue gray, somewhat teal, my wife calls it teal, um, with, with like the, the light oak uh, wood cabinet. The pictures don't really do it justice. When you get it in your home and you take it out of the box, you're kind of like, wow, these are very impressive looking speakers for you know the price and the Cora a16 are usually like 15 1600 dollars or even more here in the us which kind of knocked them off our list but you can now buy them for under a thousand dollars um in the us right now that to me is like a no that to me is a no-brainer because yeah. it's sort of a larger sounding version of the 806 bookshelf that has a very sweet tweeter by the way for, for Focal, right. I, th I think you'd be shocked by it. Um, yeah, I'll have a look. I'll have a look and see how much they are in the UK. If I didn't check yeah. that. But, and so. and it's, just, it's, it's just an all-around good loudspeaker that doesn't really do anything that bad. And um, it doesn't need a ton of power. Right. Um, like, I, I mean, you can, I wouldn't say that the name Unity Atom is the ideal partner for the Cora A16. I wish that it was. Um, I, think it need, I think the Cora A16 needs a little more power. Um, but... That's one of the name combinations that actually is pretty good. Uh, like right. the the eight oh the eight oh six bookshelf with the Unity Atom 
which is a bit of a price mis mismatch. We're talking about like a six or seven hundred dollar shelf with three thousand dollar plus network amplifier, but it does sound good together. Well, that's um, the first. That's the first speaker that's kind of pretty much on a parity of what they are in the U.S. and the U.K. So they're about a thousand dollars in the U.S. for a pair, and they look like they're about seven hundred pounds here in the U.K. Yeah. Okay. So that's right. uh, you know. Cambridge Audio actually is their their um, CXA range sounds really nice with the Cora speakers, you know. So you have like the whole and, and I mean name name won't like that that I'm recommending their biggest rival to, to be sold with their speaker, but Cambridge Audio is a really good combination with the Focal Cora series. Some of the Japanese AVRs like I guess Yamaha is not too bad. The the better Denons aren't bad. The brand new Marantz Cinema series. That were just introduced at CDA here might be a really nice combination with the chorus. Yeah. So am I getting this right that they're not quite as bright as some of the other Focal speakers? Oh, to totally different, which is why I like the them. Range. Yeah. Right. Like actually, the, the first time I listened to the Core 806, I wasn't even sure I was listening to a pair of Focal. Right. Because it was so much sweeter. It was so much more restrained. So that's probably the better word for it. It was so much more restrained than the other speakers that mm -hmm. when I turned the volume up even louder, there was no desire to turn it back down. It was actually a very, very smooth, airy, detailed, sweet sounding sort of tweeter. And when I watched movies through them, I was like, I could live with this, you know, yeah. because it, it, they do vocals really well and, and they make a center channel speaker that is as good as the, the 816 and the 806 and they, they blend perfectly. And actually, Focal actually makes another version of the Cora that actually has the Dolby Atmos upward firing modules built into it. Don't go for that one. Yeah. It, it, the, the, the whole modules thing on the top of the speakers of the Dolby Atmos work. thing. It's, it's not that it doesn't work. It's just, first of all, the speakers, the speakers are fugly. <laughs> they're just they're not they're not attractive. No, they're, they're just not attractive. And right. if you're gonna spend that kind of money. Do a proper Dolby Atmos system and put speakers above your bloody head in the ceiling. Do it right. 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 Um, yeah. But yeah, so the Focal Cora 816, which is now on sale, and my understanding is they will be on sale for the next month or two still, because I think Focal's pushing this into Black Friday here in the U.S. and Canada. Yeah. Um, that's a that's a deal. If right. if you can get the 816 for under a thousand bucks, you buy those. Um, so are they? So are they kind of tonally? They're a little bit more probably on the brighter side than something like a Wharfdale, which is quite warm, I would have thought. And, uh, yes, but yes, but the mid range is actually pretty, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it neutral. It's, right. it's, it's definitely a little more warm, warm for, for a Focal. Okay. Are there a step up in performance from something like the Q acoustic 35 eyes or the Wharfdale diamond 12.3s? I would say they're better than, hmm, that's a good question. The I would say the Focal are probably a better all-around speaker than the Diamond 12 3 and the 3050, but with the 3050, 3050 has better bass. Okay, right. Yeah, bass Definitely. performance on that speaker is very impressive for Q acoustics. So, yeah. uh, are there any um honorable mentions that none. you think that? Oh, none. <laughs> none. I tell you, there's one, there's one that I want to check out that's supposed to be coming in because I was so impressed with the stand mount. That was the Acoustic Energy. A109, I think I've got that right. So the floor standing version of the A100s, the new one. But that that I'm gonna I'm quite looking forward to that because um they seem to be quite happy with what they've achieved there. And the I thought the little bookshelf A one hundreds um, well we both like those, don't we? Yes. So that's that's something I think just for viewers' benefit, if they are out there that might be a uh, one to watch, but we haven't neither of us heard of that. No, not yet. So not so uh, if you had to pick one. That you had to live with, um, which one would it be? LRS. Would it? Yeah. Right. Because you can just scale up much better. Yeah, totally. The, I, I can. I mean, the fact that I'm using it with a sixty-five hundred dollar amplifier tells you everything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Well, I think it was good to discuss this. Actually, like I say, it's a segment which uh, I need to address the fact that I haven't reviewed uh, too many of those, but um, I'm hoping to do. It's that a fun. Moment. It's a fun category. Yeah. Yeah, no. Well, thank you, Ian. It was really good to pick your brain and get your insights on that. I think hopefully viewers will have gained something from that. And uh, yeah, you've had got a lot of experience, as I say, in this area. So uh, I think it'll help them point them in yeah. the right direction.
Absolutely. And good luck to the UK with its new prime minister. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. I think we're going to, we need a bit of luck. You, you so, need it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Ian. Take Sounds care. good. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye.